This article gives an overview of liberalism in India. A history of liberalism in India Topic: 1757 to 1947: The effect of British liberal ideas. The strengthening of British influence in Bengal with the Battle of Plassey in 1757 coincided with significant developments of thought in England. John Locke in the 1680s, Adam Smith with his monumental book in 1776, and Edmund Burke, and in the United States, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Alexander Hamilton, among others. The English language came to India in 1603 in Akbar's time, but there was then no pressing economic reason for Indian people to learn English. It was only after the consolidation of Bengal by Robert Clive and the extension of the East India Company into the Indian political landscape, that the demand for learning English began to grow. By 1835, Indians were paying serious money to be taught English, as it gave them job openings in the company. As Thomas Babington Macaulay noted in his famous minute, the natives had become desirous to be taught English and were no longer desirous to be taught Sanskrit or Arabic. Further, those who wished to, seemed to pick up English very well. It is unusual to find, even in the literary circles of the continent, any foreigner who can express himself in English with so much facility and correctness as we find in many Hindus. See the minute at 1. Those who learnt English quickly became aware of its literature, including the rapid evolution of Western political thought. This greater awareness of the advances in freedom laid the seeds for the demand for self-rule. While people like Raja Ram Mohan Roy were beginning to articulate elements of these political arguments, no one was in a position to explore and articulate new insights. However they did catch up with key liberal ideas and began implementing some of these advances thought through their new demands for greater freedom in India. While the West was firmly embedding its new political institutions, or contesting the growing forces of socialism which had overpowered parts of the feudal and aristocratic West, the Indian intelligentsia was grappling with the challenge of the first major task ahead of it, namely independence. In the Portuguese colony of Goa, Francisco Luís Gomes advocated freedom, self-rule, and political unity for India. His outstanding contributions towards the fields of liberal philosophy and economics led him to be widely hailed as the Prince of Intellectuals, in Europe. As well as Raja Ram Mohan Roy, other contributors to political thought on freedom in 19th century India included Dadabhai Naoroji, Mahadeo Govind Ranada, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, and Farazesha Mehta. Theory led to an independence movement in India. Mahatma Gandhi demonstrated through a humane, nonviolent, and dignified protest, that all humans were equal and should be treated equally, including their being given the opportunity to govern themselves. This was a major advance in the theory and practice of freedom and can be argued to have had a major effect in ending the age of imperialism and the age of racial discrimination. Jawaharlal Nehru, who was very well educated and fully aware of the history of liberalism, seems to have had surprisingly little faith in an individual's ability to think and take responsibility for himself or herself. Nehru did not emphasize the importance of each individual undertaking self-reflection and choosing among ethical alternatives. Possibly, in his view, making these ethical choices was too difficult for the common man. He definitely believed that these choices were best directed through state-level dictates laid down by governing elites. Through planning. In any event, he veered toward collectivist and socialist thinking where decision-making power is concentrated in the state. Decentralization, where power and freedom vests with people at the lowest levels, was anathema to Nehru. He stated in his autobiography, Socialism is for me not merely an economic doctrine which I favor, it is a vital creed which I hold with all my head and heart. Indian industrialists with their Bombay plan also sided with Nehru on a socialist pattern based on the Soviet five-year plan model. Despite the environment in which socialist thought was flourishing, India was fortunate to enjoy at least a few liberties even before independence. The advances made in political institutions in England as a result of liberalism were imported and embedded into India over the decades by British rulers. 
Things like the right of assembly and protest under reasonable circumstances, the right to property, and freedom of expression, with a relatively free press, became a part and parcel of Indian political landscape before independence. <laughs> Post-independence liberalism The 1949 Constitution gave to Indians some of the liberal rights that the British and Americans had come to expect by then. In addition, India extended franchise to everyone, all adults had the right to vote in the Republic. That was earlier than even most developed countries had provided to their citizens at that time. But on most political issues, India adopted Nehru's socialist model, that included a significant dilution in property rights, among others. The government entered businesses as its primary activity, to help it achieve the commanding heights of the economy. Government factories sprung up quickly and began churning out shirts, watches, fridges, scooters, bicycles, milk, bread, and cheese. Chakravarti Rajagopalachari, the second Governor General of India and Abharat Ratna, and Mano Masani, and economists like B.R. Shinoi advocated greater freedom. However, they were unable to override the Indian fascination with socialism. Rajagopalachari informally called Rajaji was a close colleague of Nehru during the independence movement. But soon after independence he quickly began to see the risks to India of letting Nehru's fervour with socialism go unchallenged. Despite having fought for independence by Nehru's side, and without regard for his own advanced age Rajaji was 80 by then, Rajaji decided to act to block Nehru's onslaught on freedom. He parted ways with the Indian Congress in 1957 and formed the Swatantra Party which supported classical liberal principles and free enterprise. For the next 14 years till his death in 1972 he waged a battle with Nehru's Indian National Congress Party to advance freedom. But as Nehru was extremely popular at that time, and also had the resources of the government at his command, Rajaji's was inevitably a losing battle. The Swatantra Party stands for the protection of the individual citizen against the increasing tresses of the state. It is an answer to the challenge of the so-called socialism of the Indian Congress Party. It is founded on the conviction that social justice and welfare can be attained through the fostering of individual interest and individual enterprise in all fields better than through state ownership and government control. It is based on the truth that bureaucratic management leads to loss of incentive and waste of resources. When the state tresses is beyond what is legitimately within its province, it just hands over the management from those who are interested in frugal and efficient management to bureaucracy which is untrained and uninterested except in its own survival. The Swatantra Party is founded on the claim that individual citizens should be free to hold their property and carry on their professions freely and through binding mutual agreements among themselves and that the state should assist and encourage in every possible way the individual in this freedom, but not seek to replace him. Rajaji's opposition arguably helped India minimize the excesses of socialism. His party held 44 seats in parliament in the 4th Lok Sabha 1967 Swatantra was also part of the opposition to the Nath Pai bill that advocated primacy for the directive principles of state policy over fundamental rights. There were many other occasions when Swatantra acted as the voice of reason in a very unreasonable time. Making use of the free press and democracy, Swatantra pressed on for freedom, regardless of the difficulties it faced, but ran out of steam in 1973. Since then, many new thinkers such as Sanjeev Sablak, S. V. Raju, Sharad Joshi, Baron Mitra, Parth Shah, Gurcharan Das, Sovik Chakravarti, and many others have emerged on the Indian liberal scene, contributing to the debate on freedom in India, and advancing classical liberalism. Liberalism in Indian economy After independence, India adopted the socialist model of development. This led to creation of License Raj, the elaborate licenses, regulations and the accompanying red tape that were required to set up business in India. India's first attempt at economic liberalization was carried out in 1966 as a precondition to an increase in foreign aid. The economic liberalization of 1991, initiated by then Indian Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao in response to a balance of payments crisis, did away with the license Raj and ended many public monopolies, allowing automatic approval of foreign direct investment in many sectors. List of liberal organizations in India
Topic: Political parties. This is a list of both past and present political parties with liberal views. National Liberal Federation of India 1919 to 1945. Swatantra Party 1959 to 1973 Swatantra Bharat Party 1994 Liberal Party of India 2005 to 2005 Swarna Bharat Party 2013 Lok Sada Party 2006 Topic Other Liberal Organizations Center for Civil Society Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative Freedom First Indian Liberal Group Janagraha Manushi Students for Liberty India Swatantra Institute Previously India's Future Foundation Topic. Prominent Indian Liberals Pre-independence Raja Ram Mohan Roy Gopal Krishna Gokhale Mahatma Gandhi Swatantra Party C Rajagopalachari aka Rajaji Manoma Sanapost Swatantra Party Sharad Joshi Swatantra Bharat Party Gurcharan Das Dr Jayaprakash Narayan Lok Sada Party Contemporary Indian Liberals Jagdish Bhagwati Deepak Lal Parth J. Shah, Founder President, Center for Civil Society, New Delhi. S. V. Raju, President, Indian Liberal Group. See also History of India Politics of India List of political parties in India <laughs>